Hey, this is Jennifer from Advocating for the Aging. Today, I wanted to talk about the do's and don'ts of using what I consider a four-wheeled walker. In therapy world, that's what we call it, but most people that I hear in the community call it a rollator. Just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, it's the one with the four wheels, front and back, and then the hand brakes and the seat and the basket. Okay, so that is from now on what I'm gonna call a four-wheeled walker. And this one in particular, I got from Walmart, from the pharmacy section, it was $89. And I actually have a whole separate video on how I put it together, which wasn't exactly easy, but it's doable. It doesn't require tools, probably for you, it'll be easy, but maybe if you watch my video, you'll see what not to do a little bit. Um, but anyway, I wanna start by saying that when I work with older adults in the hospital, um, family members or even the, the patient themselves often will say to me, oh yeah, I have a rollator. I know you don't like those, but that's what I have. And I will start by saying I I do like them. I think it's a little bit of a misconception that I, because I'm a physical therapist, I wouldn't like the four-wheeled walker. Some physical therapists may not, but personally I do. And I'll tell you, especially the people that I do like it for and the couple kind of people that I do not like it for. So um, first let's talk about who I do like it for, okay? So especially someone who has COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, disease, whatever the D is, I don't know, um, COPD or other breathing issues, especially if they have to be on oxygen. I especially like it for them because if they have to transport the little oxygen tanks, they can put them in the basket here. Um, but the second, maybe even more important reason why it's useful for them is because if they need to stop and take a sitting break, maybe they walked 100 feet and they're exhausted and out of breath, they can stop and catch their breath and rather than totally over exhausting themselves. Um, also, if they're doing standing tasks in the kitchen or bathroom, they can stop and sit. Um, so let's talk about how to do that safely. So first of all, there are brakes here that um, keep the back wheels from rolling, which therefore keeps the whole thing from moving. And so when you're walking, if you need to slow down, like you're going down a ramp or for some reason you need to stop or slow down, you just squeeze. So for someone to be able to manage the brakes, you do have to have enough hand strength, grip strength to be able to squeeze that, which it takes kind of a moderate amount of force. Um, but if you're gonna stop and sit in it, you need to push down to lock it, turn yourself around and sit. So when it's pushed down, it's the brakes stay on. Now, as a physical therapist, I usually teach people, if you're gonna, if you're gonna sit down in a chair, back up to the chair, lock your brakes, reach back for your chair and sit. When you go to get up, make sure these brakes are on. Reach, push up from your chair, reach for your walker, and then unlock the brakes before you take off. So that's kind of rule number one with brake safety with these. And sometimes I think people don't like these walkers, physical therapists specifically don't like these because people can't seem to get down those, um, those rules with the brakes. So if you can get that down, then I like it. Um, let's see. People that I do not like this kind of walker for kind of fall into a couple of categories. One is they already have this posture where they're way back behind their walker and having this seat here kind of pushes them even further back and then their posture is just terrible and they're about to fall flat on their face. Those people should not be using this walker. They should be in a regular walker where they can be inside it as much as possible so to improve their posture. Um, the other people that I don't like this for are those that have very shuffly steps because again the walker gets too far ahead of them they stay too far back they're gonna fall on their face now the other thing would be people that cannot figure out the brakes and they're just zooming all over they can't control the walker it's too mobile for them not a good choice and then lastly if somebody has a weight bearing restriction let's say they had a hip surgery or they broke their ankle or something and so they have to keep part or all of the weight off their leg it's pretty much impossible to do with this walker because it is just too mobile so they should not be using this either they need a regular walker it can have wheels on the front but it needs to not be as mobile as this but because this has such good mobility um most people like this kind of walker because they can you know, they can turn corners, they can back up, they have a lot of freedom of mobility. And so they're more likely to use this walker. So that's why I really like it. Um, let's see, the sitting, the oxygen, transporting objects, purses, all that kind of stuff, it's great for that. Now, if you need to fold it up and put it in a car, 
It's simple. Just lift and you can fold it right up. 